I'm not going to be gentle with you, but I'm sure you already need that. Yeah, that's fine, sure. Hey internet, it's Jessica and welcome back to Chess of Blade. So we're going to continue where we left off and we just finished a wonderful dancing session with Franz at the Masquerade Ball. Still feel bad for Arden though. But I think we're close to the end now, and hopefully we can figure out who actually the murderer is. After what feels like hours that pass by in a blink of an eye, Franz pauses at the end of the particularly long and evocative waltz. His broad chest rise and, fall, rise and falls with quiet, heated breaths as he keeps a firm grip on my hand, pulling me away from the center of the ballroom. Trying to catch my own breath, I pant softly and I follow him into a little corridor connected to the ballroom side, my legs feeling a bit wobbly beneath me. Franz, where are we going? My breathless question isn't met with no answer. Instead, Franz will lead me to the small door in the hallway, tugging it open and pushing me inside with an obvious impatience. What was happening? When I stumble into the little storage a cove, illuminated by only the moonlight streaming through the single window. A dim light, however, is more enough to see the dangerously intense glimmer in Franz's eyes as he closes the door behind us, flicking the lock. Um... Okay? <laughs> he slowly approaches me with the predatory steps and I instinctively press my back against the wall. Then he rips off my mask with one hand, throwing it to the floor. Is this the smutty part? Are we hearing that part already? After he does the same to his own, the burning desire in his features become all too apparent. Olivian, I can't take it anymore. Oh god, it's happening! Whoa, before I can even think to reply, Franz suddenly grabs me, pulling me into a kiss so powerful it feels like I'm being devoured by a wolf. He greedily caresses my lower lip with his teeth, nipping and tugging at it so heatedly that I can feel the warmth of a little blood beneath where he bites. His hot tongue, however, quickly licks it up before pressing forward to invade past my lips. Okay, I think we're- I think they're gonna have sex. <laughs> okay, I thought it was gonna be at the ending like Arden, but I guess not. In this stance, I can barely keep up, as the flood of his demanding affection makes me feel like I'm being swept away. What's happening? Fran half pushes, half guides me to the floor, his weight pressing down on top of me, inhibiting, inhibiting my movements. He grabs my wrists and pins them above my head with one hand. Oh my goodness, when, when I desperately try to pull against his grip, he squeezes even tighter. I'm not going to be gentle with you, but I'm sure you already knew that. Yeah, that's fine, sure. He leans in to press his lips against my neck, but rather than leaving kisses, he starts to bite and suck on my skin, each more lingering than the last. Oh god. <laughs> my voice comes out hoarse and breathy, and the bolt of sharp pleasure courses down my spine to a pool in my hips ever to every time Bruns nips my flesh. Soon as he uses his free hand to grab the front of my tunic, yanking it open roughly. He dips his head down and drags his tongue along my pectorals, leaving a wet trail on my skin. Oh my goodness. A moment later, the warmth of the tongue laps around one of my nipples. Hey, that's nice. Don't forget about the nips, everybody. <laughs> I feel it. Oh my goodness. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I know this is like a, like a smutty CG. I can tell already, but I'm gonna have to blur it. I'm so sorry. All right, the penis is coming out, everybody. <laughs> that mouth of yours to see how your pretty lips look when they're wrapped around me <laughs> oh my god okay yeah he's definitely doing something now okay yep definitely you guys cannot see this uh let's just say Franz and Rivera are having a great time together yeah yeah I can't show that uh, <laughs> all right, it's done. They had a great time. Everything was cool. Okay, my mind starts to sink into unconsciousness, even as I try weakly to fight it. But in Franz's arms, I don't feel any danger, and he's so very warm. Finally, I've succumbed to the pull of sleep and fall into a shallow doze with my head buried against Franz's shoulder. When I open my eyes again, I realize I'm laying on my own bed, half dressed with only my trousers pulled on. The balcony door is open and I see Franz standing outside gazing up at the night sky searchingly. Wait, did he carry us up to our room? The, what? Okay. <laughs> when he hears my soft groans, however, he turns towards me, a soft smile on his lips. He steps back inside, closing the door, approaching the bedside to lean down and place a warm kiss on my forehead. Go back to sleep if you wish. I'll be back in a moment. Where are you going? Mm, you're leaving? Still half awake, I mumble a confused response only for Franz to walk quietly and shake his head. Don't worry. I'll return to your side before you know I'm gone. 
Okay. <laughs> he runs his fingers through my hair affectionately before pulling back with a longing sigh. Then he makes his way over to the bedroom door, slipping out with a quiet but determined footsteps. For a moment, the siren call of sleep beckons me again, and I almost slip off once more. But for some reason, a very uncomfortable worry sudden, suddenly flints into my mind. It's probably nothing, but... Finally, I push myself off, grabbing my shirt and tugging it on haphazardly. Creeping over to the door and pulling it open delicately, I peek out into the dark hallway. When I step outside, I glance around to see if Franz is anywhere nearby, but I don't glimpse this tall figure. Where could he have gone? As I rub my still still hazy eyes and half stumble in the direction of the main hall, a creak suddenly echoes behind me. Oh god. <laughs> Franz, is that you? I wonder where you- Before I can finish my sentence- Everything's- What the fuck? Everything before me suddenly turns black. Are we- Did someone capture us? Blindfold us? A cold sensation presses against my neck. Oh, what? How do we get here so fast? Slowly, my eyes struggle half open. I feel like I just got run over by a horse. Come on, wake up. I don't want you to miss the fun. I was right! It's Alistair! That bitch! I knew there was something wrong with that kid! A strangely familiar voice coos in my ear. Wait, that can't be. Gritting my teeth, I fight through the sense of haziness to steal a long-sighted glance at my captor. Oh, oh you no, bitch! Rivian. Or should I say, R Rivian? I knew it! You know, it was too easy because, like, he's so suspicious and I knew this was an act. There's no way. You- I had a feeling. The devious brat's smug face gazes back at me in the dark, and he seems like an entirely different person. I realized earlier that he was the only one who could have framed Valora, but he played the part of an innocent boy so expertly that I didn't think he could possibly be the culprit. I can't believe it. This kid is younger than me, but he's already an agent of such a horrible group? You know, I tried to get you out of the way at first, and you wouldn't have even gotten hurt. You just had to stay in those cells until your stupid aunt took the blame. But no, you and that idiot girl Celeste had to keep interfering. And my sad excuse for a partner couldn't even finish the job. Pathetic, really. What the hell, man? I stiffen at his traces of the uh, knife's razor sharp eyes gently along my throat, almost pressing hard enough to break my skin. My, art my eyes dart around in the meantime, trying to find some possible avenue to escape. We're in some kind of underground chamber? What kind of a place is this? Are we by the castle? Then you killed the ambassador. Why? You want to see the world plunge into war? What kind of ignorant child's game are you playing? Alistair's lips twitch in displeased grimace, his eyes narrowing at me so coldly that it sends an uncomfortable chill down my spine. Child's game? It's nothing like that. We are just playing the game that you pitiful nobles like so much. Sucking up to your kings while the common folk suffer. Once again, it goes back to the king not caring about, like, the common people and more focusing on the nope. Which, which makes sense because a lot of stories that involve uh, royalty, it, it's oftentimes like the royal family doesn't take care of the people who are, are poor, basically. And just like in Arden's route with Saber, it's the same thing. The king treated him unfairly by taking him from his family and training him to be a fighter and then forgetting about, you know, like, all the people who are suffering. So... It's the same reason I'm getting at. Besides, that ambassador was one of our best former agents, you know. What? Until he turned rogue, that is. Oh. He should have known we'd catch up to him sooner or later. Oh. Oh, no wonder everyone was so wary of Franz, too, because where he's from. I guess that makes sense, too. Like, the, the Peruvian kingdom is not well off with this kingdom, so. The ambassador was a former agent of the Disciples? Possible. They must be everywhere. What about Franz? I don't think he's bad though. I can't- there's no way, come on. As I grip my teeth together and meet Alistair's wiggly sharp gaze, the sound of scuffling suddenly comes- uh, suddenly echoes from nearby. Ah, I think they're bringing your friend here. I wanted to have a bit of fun with both of you, just to make you suffer for trying to mess up our plans. What? A sense of panic rushes through my heart as I watch the nearby doorway with wide eyes.
Aw, oh, come on! They have freaking- Oh, god damn it. Sure enough, two darkly clad men drag in a tall, str struggling figure whose face takes barely a split second for me to recognize. Franz! Let him go, you bastards! At my outburst, Franz's eyes immediately shoot over to me, and he lets out a furious hiss between his teeth as he realizes that I'm being held by Alistair. I bashed your brains out when I had the chance back at the festival. You'll pay for this. He knew, he knew, because remember he was so mad at Alistair, he knew there's something wrong with him. He glares at the boy with a look of absolute disgust, something I've never seen on his normally composed features before. But Alistair only offers a wide grin in response, his eyebrows raising provocatively. Oh, really? Am I the one who deserves to have my brains bashed out? After all... He strokes a hand through my hair gently, which makes Franz struggle even more in desperation against the men holding him. I'm not the one who attempted high treason trying to murder my very own uncle. What? What? Oh, wait, no, because he's the nephew of the king! He tried to kill the king?! My heart skips a beat. I stare at Franz, expecting him to snarl and deny Alistair's incredibly, incredible accusation. But instead, he suddenly stops struggling. He bites his lower lip, opening his mouth as if to say something before closing it again and lowering his head slightly. The ambassador. I was poisoned by his words. I lost sight of myself. That's probably why he hates him. His voice comes out of the way I've never heard it before, hoarse, anguish, and guilty. It's somehow painful to see him like this, like a tortured lion stripped of its pride, confidence tattered and broken. You... You tried to kill the king of Peruvia? Your own uncle? Franz? My astonished words caused Franz to close his eyes painfully. Oh, it was a few years ago and everyone kept it hush-hush. But some of us know the truth. The Peruvian ambassador was one of them. You should have been happy we killed him. Um, okay, no one's asking you, bitch, okay? He was a monster and he deserved his death. Things he made me do. I almost poisoned my own king. Alistair clicks his tongue chidingly, shaking his head at Franz with a scornful sigh. Don't try to pretend you're different from us. If you'd gone through with the plan, you would have been the star agent of the Disciples. And you were so close, too. So does that mean he was in the Disciples, or he he was planning to be, like, the, the, the ambassador was planning to bring him into this? My head spins and my vision feels slightly blurry. It makes sense now, why everyone seems so wary and mistrustful of Franz. And all that talk of the Disciples of Ignatius and the former members right before my eyes. He was almost a murderer! A treacherous murderer! What stopped him from it? Rivian. I'm sorry. I wanted to tell you, I just... I just wasn't... brave enough. Oh, come on, that's bullshit excuse, Franz, and you know that. His fingers curl into a trembling fist, uh, knuckles going white, as he hangs his head bitterly. I can't muster up a reply. After all my life, father always told me that treason is the worst crime one can commit. Like patricide, murdering the country's father, leaving the people unstable and in chaos. What other types of dark secrets does Franz have that I don't know about? He has killed other people? Attempted to silence the mur rumors? You're clever, Rivian. Clever enough that I might spare your life and take you into the fold of Ignatius. Oh, shut up! You'd be a wonderful agent. Once you realize we're working for the greater good. Alistair trails his fingers down my neck where I almost forgotten the cold blade was still resting against my skin. It could be the start of a new life for you. We could build a better society. One without the disgusting games of the court. No intrigue or politics. Yeah, but you guys are like extremists. Like, are you kidding me right now? There's, I understand the ideal would be like no government in any situation, but you have to realize that's never going to work out and never going to happen. His tempting murmur echoes in my ear. These games. I thought I could understand them, but if only they result in heartbreak and deceit, what do they matter at all? If I refuse to play them, am I a traitor? Or it is truly treachery if one does the world a favor by cutting down the horrible webs the court weaves. All you have to do to redeem yourself is show your dedication to us. Don't tell me you're going to tell me to kill Franz! Useless fool. Alistair lifts me by my feet, gently pressing me forward to where Franz is slumped in between the two men holding him. 
It feels like I'm stuck in some sort of horrible nightmare as Franz raises his head to gaze up, me, to gaze up at me, a pleading, desperate look in his emerald eyes. The cold touch of the blade lifts away from my neck and instead, Alistair takes my hand, placing it over his own atop the dagger and slowly moving it towards Franz's chest. It just takes a little push, you know. One little push to end the life of a man who would have used you, betrayed you, maybe even killed you. Turned against you, like he turned against us. But <laughs> this guy has a weak argument. He just said, turned against you like he turned against us. You could betray us regardless, so like, why would I trust you? What kind of- oh my god, you're terrible. I stared out at Franz as Alistair's words breath against my ear, swallowing the lump in my throat. It's so tempting to believe him, to spare my own life in exchange for another life of someone I've already known for a few days. Someone I have been so reluctant to believe, who seems to go to be true. Someone whose motives I questioned all along. Rebian, forgive me. I... I couldn't protect you. But I will never betray you. Not now. Not ever. I think with Franz, the thing is, he needs to prove himself. It's more like he has to prove himself rather than like, oh, yeah, you're definitely gonna betray me or whatever. Or like, oh, yeah, we're romantically involved with you, so I trust you right away. Like... We're gonna the point, we only known this guy for like, what, a few days? You can't be like, yeah, I completely trust this guy. He gazes into my eyes longingly, yearningly, with the sad bravery of a man stepping willfully onto the gallows. It feels like my beating heart is being torn in two. I can't- I don't know what to do. Oh! Okay, like the other route, I'm gonna do both the good and bad ending. I would like to do the good ending first, so I'm gonna say... The kindest choice is, there is one thing I know. I, I think this is like the bad ending because it feels like you're gonna kill him. So I'm gonna do the good ending first and then we'll look at the bad ending after, okay? I blink back the tears suddenly welling in the corner of my eyes. Murderer. I'm no murderer. So many times I doubted you, your motives, the reason why you're always staying by my side. A wane spell curls over Franz's lips. To be honest, I don't really know what to believe in anymore, but there is one thing I know for certain. Alistair leans against my shoulder, curi uh, curiously, a dark smile on his face. Oh? And what's that? We just take the blade and stab it in his neck. <laughs> I take a long, deep breath. I didn't come this far to stop now. And moreover, I'll be damned if any stuttering, arrogant, evil brat is the one to end my legacy before it even starts. Ooh, you get him, Rivian! <laughs> In Alistair's brief moment of surprise, I abruptly wrestle a hold of the dagger, driving it through one of his fingers with a sickening slice. Ooh! He shrieks in pain, pushing me away and stumbling back. The blood drips from his hand down onto the floor, where the remnant of his finger rests in the crimson pool. We cut off his finger! You bastard! Kill him! Oh no! Not today! Not today, I say, before the two startled men can lunge forward towards me, Franz suddenly thrashes it out of their grip. He punches one of the left squarely in the jaw, sending him reeling and crashing into the floor. When the other tries to draw his sword, Franz knees him roughly in the stomach, making him wheeze in pain. Alistair, however, nimbly jumps back in a safe distance, reaching for a array of throwing knives at his belt. Franz, watch out! Woo! A cr oh, at <laughs> my warning cry, Franz leaps out of the way and just the two sharp knives whirling past his head. He yanks the sword from the staggering man and I leap towards Alistair with a growl, moving at lightning speed. Yeah, you get him! Get him, Franz! Get him! But with the bloody hand, it's clear that Alistair is no stranger in combat. He quickly dodges the side of Franz's charge incredibly fast thanks to his small statue. So he is an assassin, right? Like, my prediction is right because th those kind of like throwing knives and stuff is someone like an assassin would use. Spill your guts on the floor, you damn traitor. He throws another barrage of knives in Franz's direction, letting out a furious cry. The blo His bloody finger makes it all the blade almost far off the target, but... <clears throat> What happened? The other knife that graves up Franz's hips, leaving a tear and red and gash in his clothing. Fuck! Yet he barely flinches for a moment instead of drawing for Alistair to try to wrestle him to the ground. <sighs> they crash onto the floor and it's clear that Franz has the upper hand in the strength uh, by far. He manages to pin Alistair, glaring down at him with gritted teeth, getting ready to press the blade into his hand to the boy's throat. Just then I hear the murderer's cry behind me. The kidnapper! Ugh! A sharp pain shoots through me. Do we get stabbed? Blood trickled down from my side and the burning heat uh, deeply stings my flesh. 
I I'd step aside just enough so the darkly clad man could uh, only slice my side instead of impaling me. <laughs> Who the hell is this dude? My heart hazard strike cuts into his face and as and he staggers back, clutching his bloody eyes with a howl. Ugh, you fools. I glance back over to where Franz and Alistair were, just in time to see the boy wiggling free during Franz's moment of distraction, leaving his three groaning companions rolling on the floor. Alistair dashes straight for the exit, taking off before Franz can even try to grab him. He escapes? But Franz immediately hurries over to me, not even sparing another look in Alistair's direction. Are you alright? You're hurt. I better bandage that quickly. I'm fine! Just go get that idiot! What are you talking about? He's escaping! We have to capture him! At my frantic retort, Franz only offers a slight slight smirk, tearing off the strip of clothing from his shirt and setting it about patching up my side. He's going to run into a nasty surprise. We're still on the castle grounds, and when I left you earlier, I was telling Linnaeus to put his men on patrols for the rest of the night. Oh, good job! You told Glasses to do something! I had a feeling something bad was going to happen, and it seems I wasn't wrong. He pauses, chewing on his bottom lip, gazing down at me with a complicated look of concern and relief. You're always one step ahead of me, aren't you? I murmur lowly, sinking against my chest, sinking against his chest and closing my eyes. A deep shiver rack racks my body and I clench and I clutch onto the front of Francis shirt, trying to hold back a wave of motion. I I'm so sorry. I almost almost Shh. He strokes a warm hand gently through my hair, holding me tightly against his powerful form. I can hear his heart beating hard and fast, but I find it deeply comforting. I'm the one who should be sorry. I should have explained things to you earlier. There's no excuse for what I did when I was younger. I mean, it's not like I don't entirely blame Franz for what he did, but he shouldn't have, like, lied. Our eyes lock and the look of guilt wells up on his own once more. But this time, it's mingled with the boldness of someone ready to face his own demons. I was once the ambassador's assistant, and he was the most powerful spy on the disciples' behalf. I did m many awful things at his behest, but I hated my uncle so much that I thought I was serving a better cause by trying to crumble his reign. Yeah, so my- yeah, one thing, my- my- my prediction for his route, I was close. He was- he almost became, uh, a spy for the Disciple, so... That's good that he didn't. <laughs> but the Ambassador's own lust for power overcame him. He wanted my uncle out of the way so that he could seize control of the Empire. And he used me as a tool to get to him. See, that's what these, like, crazy fanatics are always- In every story, they always say, like, Oh, we don't want power, we don't want government, we don't want these people controlling, blah blah blah, we want to help the, the little people. You're not doing that. This asshole just wanted the crown for himself, so... He turns his gaze away for a long moment, and far off in troubled look in his eyes. One night, during a gathering between kingdoms, much like this one, I stole into the meeting room intending to poison the king's cup before he and the others arrived. No one suspected me of anything, as I was his nephew. But as I hesitated, standing by the king's chair and wondering what to do, I heard a voice cautioning me to think again. Who's? That voice was your father. Oh! My father? At my sharp gasp, Franz slowly nods his head, a bitter smile on his lips. He knew who I was, and who was controlling me. He told me the ambassador planned to use me as a scapegoat after I killed the king. That it would be blamed on me, and I would be betrayed by the man I was working for. The words he told me then have stayed with me since. A pawn is disposable, Franz. A king is not. Those are the rules, but the trick is this. Find a king who you would gladly die for. When your opponent sees you have no fear of defeat, that's the moment you've truly won the match. And the moment you can never turn back. His eyes slowly return to me, a gentle warmth returning to them as he lifts his bloodied hand to cup my face, large thumbs brushing tenderly across my cheeks. He let me escape that night. But the ambassador sullied my name after I abandoned him. What a dick. Since then, 
I've tried to redeem my heavy heart by fighting the disciples of Ignatius whenever I can. Though that guilt still plagues me every night and day. When I came here to protect you, I only intended to repay my debts to your father. But instead, I found a king amidst a sea of faceless pieces. Ah, uh, that explains so much why he was just like, Hey, I'm gonna watch over you now. <laughs> and a king I would gladly die for. Is he talking about Rivian? Oh! <laughs> the distance between our lips slowly closes. And as we share a painfully gentle kiss, I feel my eyes brim with tears. I want to apologize to yell at him for keeping secrets, to embrace him with a passion like never before. But more than anything, I want to savor this moment, where his very heart is bared to me, completely and utterly defenseless. I want to protect it. I want to hold on to him forever. I want to help him move beyond the shadow of his past into the new light. Surely he'll always be haunted by things he did and what could have happened, and that darkness will never fully leave his soul. But even if this is a game we'll truly never will never truly win, I refuse to give up without fighting my very hardest. And as Franz cl clutches me to his chest and buries his face against my neck, letting out a, sh a stuttering breath, I can only think of how thankful I am. Thankful that I kept believing in this crazy perverted foreigner. <laughs> this beautiful traitor. Franz. <sighs> this one's amazing! Try it, Franz! Mm. You're right. Oh yeah, because they both it like sweets. Absolutely melts on the tongue. We should order a box and take it home, don't you think? I can't get enough of the divine taste. The sound of bustling market crowd fills the air around us as we walk down the busy street. Franz's warm hand tightly clasps on my own, while the, I use the other to hold a delicious cake we purchased from the, one of the stalls. Aww! <laughs> Ooh, we should sample those next! Look how colorful they are! The tall man by my side chuckles, bumping my hip playfully. Face yourself, kitten. Unless you intend to burn off all that sugar with me. <laughs> They're so cute! They're shopping for sweets together! I've gotten accustomed enough to Franz's teasing that I just offer him a dry smirk, shaking my head. I much prefer making you do all the work. You have to put those muscles of yours to good use, after all. We exchange body grin as we turn to the corner, heading into another row of shops and stalls. It's almost been a year since we met at the King's celebration. After Alistair was captured and sent to prison along with his conspirator, Lanaya saw it that Valora was set free and her name completely cleared. I won't say she's become overly friendly with me since then, but she certainly warmed up a little, so I suppose I should be grateful for that. Franz and I recover from our wounds easily enough, though I still bear a scar on my side. I'm a little proud of it. When the carriage arrived the next day, Franz saw fit to hop onto mine and completely ignore his own, which I was secretly overjoyed about. As for my father's reaction when I first brought home when I first brought home Franz, it was priceless. He could barely believe his eyes, and they had a rather emotional reunion, as emotional as father can possibly get anyway. As for me, father said he didn't look doubt he didn't doubt for a moment that I'd make it back home safely. He, it seems he knew of the disciples' plot to unravel at the party, but rather than putting them on alert by attending himself, he sent me instead and hoped that they let their guard down. It's a plot of disgusting, typical, and cunning of father that my eyes rolled back to the head where, when he told me, but I can't deny that it was effective. Yeah, so it was like, his plan was just like, let's throw them off, and at the same time, let's have my son be tested. Since that fateful celebration, it's ta the time has flown by, and it's hard to believe Franz and I live together as lovers now. We bought a small house not too far from my parents reside, though without any servants. They just get in the way after all, yeah, without them fucking all over the house. <laughs> as a result of what happened, as well as some thankful words from Lenaeus and Valora, I was offering an assistant ship to our current ambassador. I work with them closely while Franz presides. Nah, nah. While Franz provides guidance on the side on how crazy the world of politics functions. Ah, ah, they're holding hands! They're so cute! Doesn't this place remind you of the festival at the King's Ball a little bit? It's very nostalgic. Ah, it does. Are you fondly remembering when I first swept you off your feet? When you, like, uh, grabbed him by the balcony and threatened to push him off? Yeah, sure! <laughs> Something like that, although I don't think I phrase it so flatteringly. I smirk up at him as he lets out a playful hop, tossing my hair and giving my hand a squeeze. Forever hard to get, kitten. But I wouldn't have it any other way. Oh. Ah, shall we go see the show they're putting on over there? It looks like some sort of dramatic play. And we both have a flair for the dramatic, though. 
Yes, let's go. I just hope they don't sell out those cakes by the time we come by the time we come back. I hold Franz's hand tightly as we hurry over towards the nearby stage, giddy from the excitement of those happening around us. As I steal a glance up at Franz's tan, happy features, I can't help but thank the gods for how lucky I am. To love and be loved is something I didn't know I was missing until I met this ridiculous scoundrel of a man. But now I have him. I think it's safely to say, I don't plan on giving him up anytime soon. Hey, so that was the ending to Franz's route. At least a good ending. I actually like that. Before I go on to the bad ending, I just want to discuss this one a little bit. Um, it's definitely more of like a redeeming kind of story for 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 Franz. It's kind of, it's deception and and redeeming kind of thing. Arden was more of like redeeming himself and his uh, love to. Uh, Rivian, but Franz is more like redeeming himself and like what he believes in and since Rivian's father said just find a king that it's that who's worth fighting for he found Rivian, so Rivian is his king, which is very sweet in my opinion um, I think the only thing I didn't like is like we didn't see what happened to the freaking kid Alistair and what when Lenaius got in there unlike Arden's where like Lenaius showed up and whatever right so we it, it, it kind of just skipped over that I would like to see what happened like what he had to say for himself and stuff like that uh, also what, what Lenaius had to say because his interactions with Franz were was always funny anyway I'm gonna take a look at the bad ending and yeah just I expect it to be awful <laughs> okay so we're gonna take a look at the bad ending which is the kindest choice and uh, let's see what happens it's useless, isn't it? No matter how much I try to believe in Franz, there's no way out of this situation. Even if I, if we, even if I was selfish and pathetic enough to kill him to save myself, they doubtlessly just wind up ending my life too. It's true. So we're even smart to know that. And so maybe the kindest thing to do is. There's nothing for you to apologize for, Franz. <sighs> Franz's eyes tightly close. Don't worry. I'll be with you soon. I murmur softly that I can barely hear my own words. And then... Did he just stab himself? I wasn't expecting that. I thought he was legit gonna... Okay, um... I press forward with my hand clasped around Alistair's, driving the dagger deep into yielding flesh. Oh, he stabbed Franz. A soft gas comes from, the treacherous, from his treacherous lips. Alistair guides the dagger slowly across Franz's chest, carving a deep red line. A second later, he goes limp. Just like that, his life is gone. You made the right choice, Rivian. Oh, shut up! Alistair's soft voice is filled with a sadistic glee as he lets go of the weapon, curling his arm tightly around my waist instead. Are you ready to step into the light? You sound like a cultist. To renounce this horrible game and bring the world into a new, wonderful beginning? Well, they are a cult, right? So... <laughs> I close my eyes, tightening my fingers around the dagger as blood drips down my fingers. This game. I've already lost. I've lost everything. The only thing I've, la I've got left is my pride. And then my last promise to Franz. With the thought lingering in my mind, I bring the dagger up to my neck. Oh my goodness! Wait, Rivian, don't! It's over now, Franz. Don't worry. Everything will be alright. Okay! Uh, so yeah, definitely don't like that ending. I was surprised. I thought he was gonna stab himself first and then stab Franz. But, Jesus Christ, that's a little bit extreme. Like, I know you know that they're gonna kill you in the end, but you could still leave, you know? Jeez, damn Rivian. Oh my god, okay, I don't fucking like that bad ending, but, um... Th this route overall, in my opinion, I liked it, but I didn't like it as much as like Arden's route. I li I really liked Arden's route a lot, and with Franz, I like his I like his character because I love the characters who are very flirty and very like they're kind of like an asshole, not but you know what I mean, like not in a bad way, they like in a good way. They're very like cocky, if you get my drift. And Franz is definitely that kind of character, and I love that, and I loved his interactions with like you know Linnaeus. Although it was sad, Arden was in the root. It's just what Rivian said to him was really bad. But yeah, I, I enjoyed this route. I I love the voice actor for Franz, okay? Don't get me wrong, he has a nice fucking voice. It was great. Um, I think, yeah, like, the only thing I said earlier, I wish that we could have seen more what, ha what happened with, um, uh, the, 
Alistair, but it's nice that this story is more about what what's going on with Franz rather than like what's going on with Vervian like in the last route. So it's nice. They ended up very very sweet together and he found his king and they're all happy and just eating cakes. Let's pretend I didn't see the bad ending. Anyway, <laughs> let me know in the comments what you guys thought about both endings. And of course, we're going to start on Linnaeus' route next, so don't worry about that. Once again, thank you to Arjun Games for sending me a game key to play their game. I really enjoyed this route. And if you guys enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to join the companions. And if you would like to help support the channel on Patreon, the link is in the description. Or you can support the channel for free with gawkbox.com slash a girl and a game. All you have to do is make an account, open it up on your mobile phone, download the games on that page, play them, and you will donate real money to the channel, which will help me continue this series and continue the channel overall. So yeah, I loved it. I love this game a lot. So I can't wait to see what glasses has uh, for us, you know, four eyes. Can't wait to see Mr. Salty Pants, what he's going to say to us. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye! What the f- She do it. <laughs> she do it. <laughs> this is too sweet. He's like shit. <laughs> you have bad taste. I don't even know how to start explaining how wrong you are. Who gets to put the pizza in first?